after this week overview. During this week, we're going to talk about the role of individual, which technically means individual responses. Every person is different. In fact, two people can respond very differently to exactly the same hazard. For example, drinking from a contaminated well might make one person sick, while another person may not be affected. Therefore, while scientists try to understand how hazards affect human health, they cannot always predict with certainty how a hazard may affect a particular person. We have two factors. We have sensitivity and genetics. People with health issues, such as asthma and compromised immune systems, are often more sensitive to biological and chemical hazards than healthy people. That is, they are more likely to feel the effect of these hazards. Sensitivity can also vary with sex, age, and weight. Fetus, infants, and young children tend to be more sensitive to harmful chemicals than adults. This is because they are smaller and their organ systems are still developing. For example, fetus are more sensitive to alcohol than adults. Exposing a fetus to alcohol can cause mental retardation and birth defects. Genetics, many diseases have both genetic and environmental factors. In other words, both a person's genes and the environment he or she lives in can affect the individual's chance of suffering from the disease. For example, certain genetic mutations make it more likely for some women to develop breast cancer than others, but environmental factors can increase the risk of getting breast cancer. If a young girl is exposed to ionizing radiation, her chances of developing breast cancer later in life increases. Then we have the second part that we're going to talk about, which is risk management and risk assessment. So exposure to an environmental hazard does not always produce a response. Given this, scientists try to determine how likely it is that a given hazard will cause harm. This is called risk or the probability that a hazard will cause a harmful response such as death or disease. One way to express risk of various activities is to calculate and compare the probability of dying from these hazards. The process of measuring risk is called risk assessment. To assess risk, scientists need to take many factors into account. These include what the hazard is, how often human will be exposed to it, include what the hazard is as well, and how sensitive individuals are to the hazards. Risk assessment for a chemical hazard involves several steps. First, scientists identify the potentially hazardous chemical. Then, they determine its toxicity and the extent that humans will be exposed to it. For example, to determine toxicity, scientists may use animal testing to establish a dose-response relationship. To assess exposure, scientists may investigate how often humans have contact with the substance, what concentration of the chemical they will likely encounter, and the length of time people will be exposed. Scientists use risk assessment to help them make decisions about which hazards may be harmful. Policymakers can use risk assessment to help them shape policies that protect both people and environment.